good to be in church, isn't it? Amen. It'd be good to find my notes as well. That would be good. All right. Well, have you ever longed for something in your life? I mean, just a couple examples, you know, uh, maybe a vacation. <laughs> maybe you've been working hard and you're, you're looking forward to a, a vacation and you're planning it out and you're, you're just, you're counting the days, ready, ready for it to, to come and, and to go to relax and, and just have a good time. Maybe um, your car was on the fritz and you're like, I just, I need a, a, a different car and, and you're shopping around and you find one you really like and you, you know, you're, you're excited to, to get that car. Uh, maybe even simple as, as food, maybe an anniversary or a birthday and coming up and you're going to eat at your favorite restaurant and, oh, I can't wait for that meal that I had last year there and, or that dessert that I had. You know, sometimes we have these longings for things in life, and hopefully when you get them, you're satisfied. Sometimes we're not, right? Sometimes we have a longing and we get, you know, get it, and we're like, ooh, that was disappointing. But I'll tell you what, there is something, or should I say someone, that you will always be satisfied with, and that is God Almighty. Let's look in Psalm 42. Psalm chapter 42. We're going to start with the first two verses. This author who wrote Psalm 42, it says the sons of Korah, which they were temple musicians and assistants. We don't know the name of this particular author, but we get a glimpse of his heart at this time in his life. In Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? You know, there's, at least for my life, I know the longing for God fluctuates throughout my lifetime. You know, there's, there's some times where I'm just really, you know, oh, God is just, I want him so much and so bad, and I can't wait every morning to, to spend that time in prayer and reading his word and just getting to know him more and, and just, you know, just that heart is just, yes, more of you, God, more of you. And if I'm honest, there's times in my life where I'm busy and I'm tired and a lot of things going on and Oh, I got, yeah, I got to pray today. Oh, man, yeah, I got to read the word today. Yeah, I got I to gotta do this. When I get to those places where I'm not quite as strong, hungering for God like in the past, I begin to pray. I begin to pray, God, Ezekiel 36, 26, you said you were going to give the people a new heart and a new spirit. Can you do that for me now? <laughs> Because I want to be where I was before, and I'm not quite there. And I can't just make myself do it sometimes. I need your help in this process. And it's a heart thing, right? Longing after God is, is a heart thing. And saying, God, give me a new heart and a new spirit that you are first in my heart, right? There's a lot of things that try to get to the top of my heart to be sit on the throne and to rule my life. But the only one that should be there is Jesus Christ. The only one that should be there above anything and everything else in my life should be Jesus. And saying, God, help me to get to that place. Like this psalmist in 42 saying, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My prayer is, God, let the things that grab my attention and desire decrease, but let the things of you increase in my life. 
Because there's a lot of things, and things that aren't even bad in and of themselves, and God wants us to enjoy and, and all that stuff. But when that becomes priority over God, that's when it's like, God, help me get my priorities straight and right, and let you be first in my heart and my life. In verse 3, he says, My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? The psalmist is not in a good place here, <laughs> you know, and we don't have to be either to seek God, right? You know, sometimes it's like, well, if I just, you know, get through this, you know, then I'll really press into God, right? You know, if I, I, if I just get through this week, then, then I'm, you know, I'll, I'll get to Sunday and I'll really, you know, seek God then. The psalmist is weeping day and night. We don't know what's going on in his life, but there's something horrific going on in his life. But that doesn't stop him from saying, I need to be with God. I need him to be my priority. It's good to go to friends and to get encouragement, to get prayer, to get help and, and all those things but it's better going to God, <laughs> right? I mean, friends can be great and God can use them as an added blessing and, and can speak through them. But let's be honest, sometimes, you know, our friends, good meaning, but they don't, they don't get it, right? They don't get you at that moment. <laughs> well, yeah, I was in a similar situation and this is what I did and everything was fine, whatever. Well, that was you, <laughs> But this is me. And God knows you inside and out. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what you need more than you do. He knows what you need more than your friends. And sometimes it's easy to get on that phone and, and, and make a text. And that's fine. But again, making sure we go to God, right? Making sure that God is the one that we go to. And we say, God, this, I'm, I need you. <laughs> I, I don't... You know, you're the only one who knows in and out what I need, and we take that time to just get into his presence, right? Whatever we got to do to get there, we make the time to get into his presence and just pour out our heart before him. And then God can use friends as an added blessing through that. In verse 4, he says, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. He remembers going to church when things were good, right? You know, there's times where things are just going great in our life. You know, and praise God for those times. You know, there's times where we get in here and we're, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, we're just praising God. Everything's good. We're just being blessed. And, you know, we don't have these major problems going on. And we're just, you were excited about God. And then there's times where we're just dragging in from the battlefield that we just went through all week. And we just get in here and we just barely get to our seats, Right? can barely stand to worship, can, can hardly lift up our hearts or our eyes to the Lord. It's okay. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> keep being there. I want to encourage people online, if, if, you, if you don't have a church, a home church, I encourage you to get one, to be praying, and God send me to a, a church that preaches your word correctly. That allows the Holy Spirit to move in your life with, without any judgment or fear. And, and uh, people who love God and love one another, find a church that you can get involved with. Because God never intended us to do, walk this journey on our own. He intended us to be a family, a body, to go together. And there's encouragement and there's strength and there's hope and there's everything we need you know, that God can use one another through that process. But this psalmist, going through a hard time, he remembers the good days. <laughs> and with God, seeking God through the hard times, we'll get back to those good days. God will get you back to those good days, right? I mean, we go through those seasons and those times in our life, and, but God doesn't want you to stay <laughs> in that place where he was at. 
he, he wants them to get back to the, you know, the joy and the excitement of coming in and being, whew, God just took care of it. God's good. I'm, I'm, I'm trusting in him. But our part is to seek after God like he sought after God. In verse 5 and 6, He says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. You know, he he speaks to his own soul, not condemning himself, but redirecting, right? So the psalmist is, is going through this very, very difficult time in his life, and he starts to speak to his soul, because sometimes we know in our minds the right answer, right? <laughs> we know as you know, good Christian boy or girl, you know, we know the right answer, but our soul is in turmoil, So he speaks to his soul, not condemning himself, but redirecting. He redirects his focus from the emotional turmoil and circumstances in his life back to God. Saying, put your hope in God. Remember who God is. Remember who you serve. Remember the God of the Bible. And he says to praise him. You know, sometimes it's not easy to praise God when we're going through something very difficult, but it's very important to do it. Why? Not to praise him to get something, but to praise him because he's worthy. Praise him because he is God. He's worthy to be praised. But as we praise him, it begins to remind us of who he is. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. With wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Wait, God, you are awesome. I'm going through all this mess and all this turmoil, but God, you have all wisdom. God has the answer to every situation in your life. He has the answer immediately. He doesn't have to sit there and figure out, hmm, how are we going to get out of this one, Nathan? God already knows. He has the answer immediately. And that's why in James he says, go and ask for wisdom if you lack wisdom. And he says, don't doubt. Because when we doubt, we're saying, God, you don't have all wisdom. God, you don't have the answer. God, you're not big enough. You are not the awesome God that I'm really praising and worshiping and singing about. So he says, don't doubt. Know who I am. And trust that I have all wisdom, and if you ask for it, I will give it to you. And then God is an awesome God. He has all power. He has all authority. So anything in your life, guess what? God can take care of it. Right? There's nothing impossible for God. Nothing too difficult. Nothing that he can't handle. There's never a time in, in God's life that he's looking at your situation going, oh boy, they're in for a, a tough one there. I don't know what they're going to do. God's like, I created the universe. I created the angels, even the ones that fell. I created the land and the sea and the mountains and the birds and the fish. I own the cattle on a thousand hill. I, I can do anything at any time, any place I can do it and God loves us remembering that he loves you he doesn't love you any more today than he loved you yesterday or less today than he loved you yesterday he never changes and the day Jesus died on the cross and the love God poured out for this world is the same love he has for you right now at this moment And he'll have for you the next moment and the next moment and the next moment. So realizing, my goodness, I'm going through all this stuff, but my God is an awesome God, full of wisdom. He already knows the answer. 
full of power and authority. He can do it in an instant or whenever he wants, but he's got it, and he loves me. So he's going to get me through this, and he's going to take care of this. So soul, why are you downcast within me? Put your hope in God. He re redirects back to God. I have a friend that posts these devotionals, and one of them just happened to be on Psalm 42, and I thought this was pretty neat. So I'm going to read it real quick because it was blessed me, and I hope it blesses you. It says, in Psalm 42, the writer asks himself a question. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Rather than judging his emotions, beating himself up for feeling discouraged or raging over his circumstances, he sought to pinpoint the cause of his inner turmoil in God's presence. When we tell God how we feel, we're met with his grace to help in times of need, his peace to comfort us, his joy to fill us, and his wisdom to guide us. But processing our emotions is not the same as letting them lead us. The writer in Psalm 42 tells his soul what to do, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. This can make all the difference in our emotional turmoil. So when you're feeling emotional after a bout of things not going the way they should, let me suggest this. Dig a little to find out where those feelings are coming from, share them with the Lord, and then preach the gospel to your heart. God's word satisfies, nourishes, strengthens, revives, and restores our souls, always supplying what we need. You know, be, be real with your emotions. You know, some, sometimes we, we bury our emotions, right? I, I, I don't want to feel this way, or I shouldn't feel this way, and, and we push it down. That's not healthy. It's not healthy, and it's not good. Sometimes we let our emotions take control of us, and we're on this roller coaster, we're just one, you know, in the morning we're this way and in the evening we're this way and we're just all over the place because we're just letting our emotions take us wherever our emotions want to take us and that's not healthy either. But being real with our emotions, taking them before God and saying, God, this is where I'm at and I need you. I don't want my emotions to lead and guide me. I want you to lead and guide me. But this is also where I'm at and what I'm feeling, what I'm going through. And I love the Psalms because a lot of them, they, they give us an example of what to do. You know, they, they start out, whoever the psalmist and the different Psalms, they start putting their focus on God, right? I'm coming to you. You know, I'm, I'm not coming to myself and just talking out loud. I'm coming to you, the God who created the universe, the God who's worthy of praise, the God who is great and awesome and glorious. And then they, they vent. <laughs> God, my enemies are coming after me. Kill them, destroy them. You know, God, you know, this, they're saying all these things about me, Lord God. Just, you know, cut out their tongues, whatever. You know, they just kind of vent it out, Lord. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. This is what I want you to do. This is what I need. But then they always close out, but God, you're God. My hope's in you. My trust is in you. My faith is in you. You are God. So no matter what, I'm trusting in you. And that's what we can learn from. That's what we can do when we're going through those times. It's not good to bury it, my friends. It's not good to just, you know, some people even think, oh, emotions, God doesn't care about emotions or emotions are evil. That's not true. God made you with emotions. We're made in his image. He, he has emotions. He gets angry. He gets jealous. Right? But he doesn't sin in his anger or his jealousy. There's a godly, righteous way to handle our emotions. And we can 
um, learn to develop that by seeking God in times of his word, when his word and in prayer. Remember who God is. You know, when we're, you know, he tells his soul, you know, put your trust, put your hope in God. We can remember who God is and put our hope in him. Because remember, in our mind, we know these things, right? But I don't know about you, but sometimes I know God is this way, but my emotions aren't following along with what my mind knows. I'll give you an example. Like one, the Lord is our provider, right? Right? We all know that. That's one of his names. That's who he is. It's his character. It's his nature. He is our provider. You know, and I, I've struggled with that at different times in my life. And, and even recently, there's times in life where just things pop up that just weren't in the budget. Right? Unexpected things that just pop up. And you're like, what? Hundreds here, hundreds there, hundreds there. You're like, what? And the banking out, you know. You're like, what's going on? Why? And I know for me, I started to get a little stressful, a little anxiety, a little fear. Like, oh my gosh, how are we going to pay for this? And I know what's coming next month, and I know this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then that starts to come out on the family. You're getting a little snippy, getting a little irritable, getting a little, hey, we can't spend money on that. Hey, no, 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 no. You know, all those things, which... They've been great at, you know, yeah, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. We're going to, you know, we got to be wise, right? Good stewards. We can't just spend all we want. Well, God's my provider. That's another issue, right? We got to be good stewards. And my family's been great with that. But my lovely wife says, you got to trust your God. (laughs) He's your provider. Stop stressing and worrying about this stuff. She's right. So I had to get alone by myself with God. And I had to just, God, <laughs> look at all, you know, all these things that came in. Look at all the things that we have coming up. Look at you know, all the... You know, Got a son going to college. How's this going to work? God's like, I'm your provider. Do you trust me? And I know what he was asking me. is not in your good little Christian mind, you trust that I'm your provider because yes, I will trust you, God. Because that's the right answer. But he's saying, does your soul truly believe that I am your provider? Not that I can provide because I'm God. There's a difference, right? Not that I can provide, but I am your provider. I'm your God who loves you, has all power and authority and wisdom. I own a cattle on a thousand hill. I own everything. Do you trust that I am your provider? I'd be like, yes, God, I trust, but help me (laughs) overcome the lack of trust. And I just started, God, I trust you. God, I tr- you are my provider. You are. You know what? Help us and give us wisdom you know, with what we need to do. But you are going to provide. You are going to provide because you are my provider. And stepping into him as my provider, it was like this weight just being lifted off. It was like this freedom, just this... I'm going to tell you, I, I didn't have a poof $100 in my bank account after that. My finances haven't changed. But what changed was inside of a release of trusting into my God that he is my provider. Put your hope in God, soul. Stop fearing and anxiety and stress and bringing that to your family. Get to a place where you truly believe who God is. And stepping into that place. And then it's like, whew. Yeah, no, God's got it. (laughs) I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know what. But he's got it. Because he's my provider. Maybe for you, the Lord, our healer. Our part is just to believe that, right? 
Our, our part is to say, yes, no, God, you, not that you just can heal me, but you are my healer. You are my healer, and I step into that. What God does with that is up to him. Like I said, my bank account hasn't changed. You may not be instantly healed at that moment. Maybe you do. Praise God. You, know, you, you felt better. Praise God. It may not change our circumstances right then and there, but it can change our soul of saying, no, God is my healer. And whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's just this gradual thing, whether you use doctors to have wisdom and do a miracle thing, whatever, whether it's eternal healing, that when I die, I have a new body and everything, it doesn't matter, but you're my healer. And I step into that. And I hold on to that. And I'm not going to carry the weight of, well, what's going to happen to me? You know, am I going to be okay? Whatever. It doesn't matter because God's going to be with you every day. And you may have good days and you may have bad days. You may have days where you're just strong as an ox and days you're as weak as a weasel. I don't know. Uh, and, you know, you just, you know, it doesn't matter because God's with you and he's going to get you through it. But in your soul, you're just like, you're standing on cloud nine saying, it doesn't matter because God is my healer and I'm walking in who he is for me. And it goes the same with the Lord, our righteousness, waking up every morning going, I'm forgiven of my sins. The blood of Jesus has washed me. Jesus is my righteousness. I don't earn it. I am it because I'm in Christ and he's my righteousness. And we walk without that guilt, that condemnation, that shame. We walk without those thoughts of saying, you're not worth it. You're not worthy, Nathan. You're not worthy to go to God. Look what you've done. Look what you've said. Look what you, you're not worth it. No, I am worth it because Christ has made me worth it. Christ has made me righteous. I am washed by the blood of Jesus. I can hold my head up high and I can do the things God's called me to do, not because I'm worth it, but because Christ made me worth it. And so we walk in Christ is my righteousness. Put your hope in God, oh my soul. Not in the feelings and the, the emotions, not in the circumstances, but who God is. Other ones, we won't go all into them, but the Lord, our peace. You need to walk in that peace. He's your peace. The Lord, our shepherd, you shall not want. <laughs> Makes you lie down in green pasture. Sets a table before your enemies. <laughs> that's, that's who he is. We can walk in that he is our shepherd. Knowing it, not just here, but in here. The Lord is our banner. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the, the one that, that defeats the enemy for us. And his banner over us is love. The Lord is there. The Lord is with you. He says, I never leave you nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit is living inside of you. That God is with you 24-7. You may not feel it. There's times we don't feel God at all, right? Sometimes we're like, well, where are you? Where'd you go? I don't feel you. But knowing that he's there makes all the difference in the world. And it can encourage our soul, saying, no, you are here. I don't feel you, I don't see you, but I know you're here, and you haven't left me, and you know what's going on, and you have a plan for it, so I put it in your hands. You know, I was encouraged to do this at one point, and, and I started doing it, and it's, it's helped me. Writing on a little piece of paper, situations are things that are going on in my life. You know, finances, you know, this, this relationship, this thing going on, this, this, or whatever. Writing those things and then just laying them at God's feet and saying, God, this is yours. This is yours. Show me what I need to do, but Lord, it's yours. And I'm, and I'm not hold, taking it back. <laughs> and getting that revelation that God is, takes those things and says, okay, I got it, Nathan. <laughs> I'm going to take care of all this stuff. I don't know how or when or what he's going to do, 
but having that confidence that he's got it, that I've released it to him. And I've said, God, I'll do what I need to do. Show me, help me on my part. But I know you're going to do what you're going to do because it's who you are. And we have that freedom in our soul to not carry those burdens or those weights. Jesus said, hey, take off that yoke and burden, man. Let me give you what's easy and light. It's easy and light because all we're supposed to do is go to him every day and say, God, my life is yours. What do you want me to do? And we live according to his word. We walk by his spirit and we trust God that he's going to take care of it all. The Lord is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the eternal God. He, he, ar- he already is there at the end of your situation. He already knows the outcome. He already knows we're over here going, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Anxiety, anxiety, fear, worry, stress, doubt. And God's like, I already got it. (laughs) Hand it over to me. Trust me. It doesn't change the circumstance right then and there. Not always. Sometimes he does. It changes us in the process. And that's what this psalmist is doing. Saying, I'm not going to be controlled by my emotions. I'm going to be controlled by who I know God is. So I'm putting my trust in him. And I am praising the great I am. We just went over a few of the things God is. He is the I am. Whatever it is you need, any time of your life, he is it. Step into him. Step into him and who he is. And release the burden of your soul. In verse 7, deep calls to deep. And the roar of your waterfalls, all the waves and breakers have swept over me. Deep calls to deep. There's more of God for you. (laughs) He's calling us to a deeper place. You see, the ocean, right, on earth, they've, I've heard it said that we've explored more of the, the, the universe, the, the stars and the planets and others, more than we've explored the ocean. I mean, the ocean has these deep, deep, deep caverns. You know, they have mountains in, under the ocean. They have volcanoes under the ocean. They have creatures that are just crazy. The pressure to get down there, they've made some machines to get down to a certain point. But there's places we can't go. There's more to it to discover. And it's the same with God, even more so, that there, I don't care if you've been a Christian all your life, there's more of God you can discover. You, all the days of your life, you could dig, 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 seeking God more and more and more from morning till night and still not have everything of God. <laughs> there's more of him. And so he's calling us deep, goes into deep. He's like, go out into those deeper waters Go dive deeper. There's more of me. If you want me, he says, come and get me. James 4, 7, and 8, right? He says, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. That's a promise of God. If we, he's calling deeper and deeper. If we want to know God, then we got to go after him. We got to seek him. We can't just be spoon fed. We got to go after him, right? We can't just show up on a Sunday and expect to know God in a greater measure. That's one small part. But it's every day that our hearts are saying, God, we want you as a deer pants for water, so my soul longs for you. It's a deeper revelation of who he is. Right? Again, it's not getting stuff from God. (laughs) It's getting to know him. That was the, the purpose of the river in this place, is God saying, I want the people to know me more. There's more of me. Because when we know God more, then like this psalmist, our soul doesn't get into turmoil when all the bad stuff happens. Because bad stuff happens, right? It happens to all of us. We can't get out of it. We're living in a fallen world. But what we can get out of is the turmoil that we go through internally when all the outside stuff is going bananas. We can get to know God and be like, no, God, you're my provider. (laughs) Whew. 
Oh, God, you're, you're my righteousness. Whew, no more guilt, condemnation, and shame. I can go into your presence. And he said, boldly I can come and receive grace and mercy. Not because I'm all righteous, but because Christ made me righteous. Whatever it is that we need, it's in him. And we get to know him more as we go deeper like Moses is saying, he knew God's ways. He spoke to him face to face. The people of Israel knew his deeds. They knew about God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to know about God. I want to know him. I want to know him personally. And if I only talk to my wife once or twice a week, I don't have a good relationship with her. If I only talk to God once or twice a week, I don't have a good relationship with God. If I talk to him every day, I get to know him more. He already knows me, but I get to know him more. Deep calls into deep, deeper revelation of who he is. In verse 8, it says, By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. God's love is available for us day and night. Isn't that wonderful news? <laughs> day and night God's love is available for us. Sometimes we forget to receive it, though, <laughs> right? Sometimes we kind of go through the day and, oh, uh, you know, and we forget to just stop and receive the love of God. Like, whew, Father, this is nuts going on around here, but I'm so glad you've got, got this all under control. <laughs> so glad I'm in your arms right now. I'm so glad you love me. You're singing over me. Even while I sleep, you're working. You're working things out that I don't even know about. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your great love. It just makes all the difference in the world in our soul, receiving his love day and night, knowing he's got it day and night. In verse 9 and 10, he says, I say to God, my rock, why have you forsaken me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony. As my foes taught me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? This psalmist is going through something horrific. Again, we don't know. And just like you, maybe your whether, wherever you're at now or maybe in the future, your pain and emotions are real. And they may not be alleviated quickly. It's okay to express your frustrations with God. Be honest with him. He already knows, right? <laughs> Sometimes we try to hide, you know, we're afraid to say things to God. God already knows. Be honest. It's okay to be real that there's pain. <laughs> there's physical pain. There's emotional pain. There's, there's turmoil. You know, there's things that just rise up. There's things that just, you know, we're human, right? I, I, I haven't met anybody that just has no problems in their life. <laughs> and everything's just hunky-dory all the days of their life. I've never met a single person. But... What we can do is be real in those times and go to God and be like, God, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. I just want to murder this person. I just want to, I just wish you could just put a million dollars in my bank account. God, I just wish you would just act a little faster in this situation. <laughs> Whatever it is, just be real and honest. He can take it. He's heard it all before. Nothing new under the sun. God's seen it all, heard it all. You, you're not going to phase God. But what you're doing is allowing yourself to be real, to be honest with yourself, honest before God, but you don't stay there, right? That's, that's the key. Is, it's, you present it out, not to just, okay, I got that off my chest. Well, that's part one. Part two is put your hope in God and to praise him. And if we don't do that part, then we've only halfway done the job. 
but putting our hope back into God. But you know what? But God, you are this, so I trust you in this. And then we start to praise him for who he is. And as we do that, oftentimes our soul is lifted up because it puts our focus back on the God who created us, who loves us, who has all wisdom and all power to take care of anything and everything else in our lives. In verse 7, he says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my God and my Savior. But like the psalmist, don't let your emotions or circumstances control you. (laughs) Put your hope in God. Praise him. And even with him going through all that, remember back to verses 1 and 2. He says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go meet with God? Make yourself seek after God. (laughs) Right? We don't want to do it all the time. I don't. And he's telling his soul, why are you downcast? Why are you sitting here throwing a pity party? Why are you just laying down eating popcorn and and ice cream and whatever? He says, get up. (laughs) Come on, soul. Go after God. You don't feel like it, but this is the time you need it most. (laughs) So get up. And get going, seeking after God, because God's the one who's going to get you where you're at and bring you to where he wants. Again, circumstances may not change overnight, may not change for a while, but here can change as we seek after God, put our hope in him, and praise him. We're going to um, have communion today, and I felt the Lord was wanting us to do a little something different. So I'm going to invite you to come on up, if you would. And we're going to have communion together. And just a step out of just saying, God, I want to go deeper. (laughs) You're calling me deep calls into deep. I'm stepping out. So we're going to go. We're going to go after God more than ever. And we're going to come and seek God. So if you would, just come, come into the the river of God's presence through here, and we're going we're gonna to have communion together. God loves us so much. God knows what you're going through in your life and every situation in your life. He already has an answer. He already has a plan. But if you're like me, I'm asking God, like Ezekiel 36, 26, God, give me a new heart. Give me a new spirit. Because as, as much as where I may be with the Lord, I can always go deeper. <laughs> I can always want more. I can always put God in the throne of my heart. So just going to give you a minute just on your own. Just pray whatever you want to pray. But my prayer is, God, give me a new heart and spirit. Help me be like Psalm psalmist who wrote psalm 42 that as the deer pants for streams of water so my soul pants for you O god my soul thirsts for god for the living god when can i go meet with god that i have a hunger that lord god that um uh, james 4 7 and 8 you know that as i draw near to you you draw near to me deep's calling to deep god i want to know you more help me to know you more so just in your own way in your own heart just just take that time to ask the lord God, we just, we lift the bread up to you, thanking you for your son, Jesus Christ, that came to earth to die on a cross. We, we look at his example that he lived his life for you, 
and for others. Help us to do the same. That he was fully obedient to you in anything and everything. And he was a servant to all, Lord God. And he was humble. Let us be all these things, Lord. Let us be more like Jesus. And his life was not a bed of roses, but his soul was always stayed on you. His hope was always in you. He always went back to the word of God. He was always led by the Holy Spirit. Let us be the same. And Lord, I just pray as a, as a church for all of us to have hearts like the psalmist in Psalm 42, that we long for you, we hunger for you, we go deep, calling after deep, going deeper into you to get to know you more. We'd have new hearts and new spirits, Lord God, that you are enthroned in our hearts above anything and everything else. Not that those things are bad, but that, that they have to go through you, Lord God, that everything we do is in you, through you, and for you. So Lord, we thank you for the cross. We thank you that you died so that we can become children of God through our faith in Jesus and through your grace. So we partake now of the bread. Thank you. Thanking you for the body broken for us that brings our eternal healing forevermore. And thank you for the precious blood of Jesus the blood, Lord, that was shed for us, that washes us white as snow, that makes us the, you are the Lord, our righteousness, not on our own righteousness, but because of you. But help us to live righteously, to do what's right in your sight, to obey your word, Lord. We can't ignore that or neglect that, Lord God. Help us to live righteously and justly the way you've called us to and convict us when we're not and discipline us when we're not so we can be in right relationship, Lord God. But Lord, we thank you that you are our righteousness, that we didn't earn it, you just paid for it for us. We thank you for the blood that washes our sins. Bless your people, Lord, as we partake in this cup representing your blood. Let's take together. You know that God loves you, very much and he wants more of you than you want more of him that's just who he is he loves you and he has more to give us if we just take that time every day to say yep God I'm going in deeper I'm going deeper today show me who you are reveal yourself more to me and as we do that he will pour more and more into us so be blessed Seek the Lord and have an amazing rest of your day. So God bless you all.